everyone. Welcome back. Today's topic, we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about God's plans, God's purposes. We're also going to talk about leaving a mark on this world. And basically, it all comes down to what we believe and how we're walking through life and how we how we look at this crazy journey that we're on. You know, one of the things that I love to talk about a lot is bringing heaven to earth. That so struck me with the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And just that we have the full access of heaven. Like we have everything that heaven um, holds that we're to be pulling down to the face of this earth. That's part of our mandate. But as we look at this, how we, how we access that, how how we uh, learn to thrive in a very difficult world actually comes back to what our belief system is about our very formation. So the formation of the world, our very formation, who God is, things like that. So I really wanted to talk about a little bit about our formation, about your formation, because, you know, one of the things that we're, I, I'm totally pro-life. Okay. I, I, um, um, every, every child has value. Okay, um, from the moment of conception. And part of the reason is because your life, my life, didn't just begin at the moment of conception. You could actually say it began on God's drawing board up in heaven as, as he as he thought about you, as he thought about me, as he thought about each person on the face of this earth and each baby who's been aborted. Okay. Now if you let me just stop right here, take a pause right here. If you have had an abortion, there is grace, there is healing, there is forgiveness, there is no shame, okay? And we would love to walk you through that healing journey because we have a wonderful God who's holding that precious little baby in his arms and wants to just set you free from the ramifications of that. Um, that's not something you're to carry through life. So I want you to hear that. Okay. I want you to hear that. Even as I talk about like formation and, and where we, where we come from. And so again, life begins in heaven, actually um, on God's drawing board. Now think about that. Think about your hair color, your eye color, your skin color, you know, everything that goes with your ethnicity, um, you know, all that, all that began as a thought that he had, you know, in heaven. Um, and not only that, but in, in that process, he's like, okay, these are the plans and purposes I have for you. So this is what I need to put with you. This is what this vessel called your body needs to contain so that, so that you're ready to walk into the fullness. Like that's, that's part of that thought process. And we see this in, in Jeremiah 1.5. And this is where the Lord's speaking to, to Jeremiah. And he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet for the nations. So one of the things that the Lord's saying to each one of us, and he's saying, hear this, hear this. I for, before, before, just say before, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay, before you were even conceived. God knew you. Okay. Before you were born, I sanctified you. God, before you were even born, sanctified you for the plans and purposes he has for you on this earth, in this season, at this time. Now, in Jeremiah's case, he had ordained Jeremiah as a prophet. For each one of us, we're not all prophets, okay? Each one of us, though, we are ordained for something that God has called us to do. Okay, it, another dimension of this we see in, in Psalms uh, 139, 15. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. So part of this is also the understanding that you are a unique creation. Just say I'm a unique creation. Not only are you unique cr creation, but you were a neat creation being planned in the mind of God before you were conceived and received a physical body. He was creating, he was watching that creation form and come into being, come into existence. Again, I want to point out again that in Jeremiah, notice that before he was in the womb, he'd already been given a purpose. And I find this amazing, but not only that, it goes to you and I as well. Again, and I, I can't say this enough, that before you were in the womb, 
God gave you a purpose. Think about that. What would change in your life if you began to understand that before, 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 hear me, before you even were in your mother's womb, God gave you a purpose. In other words, Jeremiah, as with you, as with me, we're created to leave a mark on the world. And as I say that, I also want to say that, remember, everyone's purpose is unique. Everyone's purpose has a specific sphere of influence. Okay, we can't all have the same purpose. We can't all minister in the same place. We don't all have the same gifts because each one is unique. So one of the major things that holds us back from walking into the plans and purposes that God has for us is that we compare ourselves to others, to their sphere of influence. And we, we put ourselves, it's like, I'm not them. I don't, I don't have this or I don't have that. And I just feel like the Lord's saying, stop, stop. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you came to be, I put plans and purposes within you. Before you came to be, I put within your very DNA the things that would make your heart sing as you, as you carry out the fullness of my commandments on earth. Before you were in your mother's womb. Before, before, before I gave you that unique quality that makes you, you, and allows you to do what I've called you to do on the face of this earth. So stop comparing to others and stop making excuses because I put all this in place before I even put you in your mother's womb, before you were even conceived. I love what Bill Johnson says, and this is my paraphrase. I don't have his quote exactly right, but we absolutely cannot afford to receive or entertain any thought that's not from God. This also means that we cannot afford to receive or accept others' negative opinions of us. Hear me? We cannot afford it for a long time. I took on others' negative opinions as to what I could do or what I couldn't do because of my background, because of my education, because of my gender, or because, I mean, that list could go on and on and on. And I had to learn that that wasn't what defined me. Okay, that I had to allow God to define me and step back and understand that he made me uniquely me. He made you uniquely you. And if we celebrate that in ourselves and in each other, then everything changes and we are able to leave a mark on the world. Because one of the plans of the demonic is to keep our swallowing in the cans or the regrets, all the various excuses that we come up with so that we don't leave that mark, so that we're not as effective as we're created to be. So Basically, what it comes down to is anything in our belief system that does not align with the word of God, what he says about us. We can't afford to give that space. There's no, it's like there can't be, like the parking lot's full. Our minds have to be so full of the wonder of God, of the truth of God, of the, of the dreams of God, of the word of God, that there's not room for those thoughts, opinions, belief systems that don't align with what he has said. There's not room for them to to park there. They can't take up space. When we talk about holding every thought captive, it's not just holding the bad thoughts captive. We take them captive. We we get rid of them. They're eradicated. But we also hold captive the thoughts that come from the very throne room of heaven, the belief system that comes from the king of king and lord of lords. You see, God didn't do a great experiment when he created you. It wasn't like, let's create him and see how he does, or let's create her and see how this model does. No, he created you with the fullness, with the capacity for victory, not for defeat, for victory. That's why in Ephesians, we're told to put on the full armor of God. Why? Because we're created for war, but we're also created for victory. Okay, we're created to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's not by accident. It's very, very intentional. So another thing that we have to talk about with this is our citizenship, that we're citizens of heaven. And like, we know that, but do we really, really know it? You see, we're created for the heavenly environment. Just say that right now. I am created for a heavenly environment. Say it again. 
I'm created for a heavenly environment. So often we capitulate to so much here on the earth and on the atmosphere, on an atmosphere filled with fear, filled with pain, filled with discouragement, filled with hopelessness, that we forget that we're carriers, our, our papers are from heaven. Our, what we carry, our citizenship comes from heaven. It's from a totally different realm. And we need to have that identity that walks in that, that grabs hold of that, that carries it. Of course, with all that, we have a choice to make. What are we going to align with? What are we going to fill our minds with? What are we going to identify with? Is it going to be the things of this earth or is it going to be from the things of heaven? Where's our focus? So with all that said, assuming that we're following creator God and the plans and purposes that he has for us, we have to find our fit, right? Have you ever walked into a place and it's just like, this isn't me. Like, I, I don't fit here. It can even be, it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a bad place. I mean, I, I hope when you walk into a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a store that's practicing, you know, all the occult, you walk into a psychic reader or something that, you know, you don't belong. Like you turn around and, 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 and leave. I mean, you should be, it, you're going to mess them up so bad just by your presence, but it doesn't mean that you're supposed to stay there unless God's placed you on a very specific assignment. Okay. That you're to take that down. Okay. But have you ever even walked into a church service, a body of believers? And like, you just know, it's not that there's anything wrong. It's just not your fit. Hear me. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong in that situation. It's not your fit. So we have to find our fit. And it also means we have to find our place within the body of Christ. You know, in 1 Corinthians 12, we have that passage that talks about um, receiving different spiritual gifts. And it also talks about the body having different parts, not just one part. And, and really the point is that there's, there's no part of the body that's less than important as another. It takes the whole body. It's like, as I'm, as I'm talking, I, I'm gesturing, okay? Now, if, if I'm doing something with my hands, let's say make a little heart, but my hands, I didn't have any arms, then the hands can't function, right? Okay, or so many people want to be the head, but the head without the rest of the body can't do its job. The rest of the body without the head can't do its job. And so if you try to take off your arm, look at the limits, you might compensate but it's still not the fullness of who God's created you to be. So if we want unity within the body of Christ, that means that we all have to find our fit and stop comparing with others or stop being jealous of others and envious of others because of their position, their title, their authority. And we have to find where we fit and begin to function in that. And honestly, as we do that, there's great joy that becomes because it's what God put in us before we were even created before we were put in our mother's womb and of course we can grow from that area too that's one of the things about the kingdom of heaven is that leaders don't start out as leaders they grow into that position but through that there's a sphere of influence that we so that sphere of influence that we have can go from being quite small to quite large the thing is we do it coupled with God and what he's put within us So we have to grow into purpose and remember also, we tend to want to get to the destination that we forget to look around and enjoy the journey, but we need to learn through that journey to enjoy it and to look around because if we don't look around, we're going to miss so much. We will miss so much. You know, my husband's great at, you know, when we're driving down the road, he'll spot this, he'll, he'll even spot like a tool lane alongside the road. And, you know, I'm just driving. Like I, I miss, I take in the big picture, the big scenery, but not necessarily the necessarily the little specific things and he sees the details he sees you know like driving along the road he enjoys the journey he actually loves it when I drive because he just likes to look around okay and so you know but the point is are we enjoying the journey that God has us as we're on the face of this earth because basically it is a journey it is a journey say that it is a journey so Again, as, as, let me take one step deeper. I want you to go outside today. If you're in an area where there's um, oak trees, look for an acorn because God has called you to be an oak of righteousness. And this is that same concept. That acorn is only in seed form. Okay, given the right nutrients, the right environment, that acorn can grow into a mighty oak. 
Now, the thing about us is we're responsible for that growth. That acorn is just the seed, okay? And you're like in the wild, you know, it's God plants them. He cares for them. Sometimes we plant them. We care for them. We have a beautiful oak tree in our front yard, which was this little thing when we moved into this house. And now it's big. It's just loved it here. It's like been growing on steroids. Um, but the thing is, is we're responsible for how we grow. So you may feel like right now your gift or your purposes are this little seed. Well, nourish it and water it. Get into the word of God and get around other believers where you can grow. Look for your fit in the body. Rein in where you're seeing yourself becoming jealous or envious or comparing yourself to others. Actually rein that in and just take it before the father and let it go. Because you want to grow into the mighty oak that God's created you to grow. And you see, as you grow into a mighty, mighty oak, what's an oak? It's a shade tree. What do shade trees do? They provide a home for others. They provide covering. They provide protection from the heat of the day. Okay, that's part of what we're called to do. But, um, you know, that, that tree, again, it begins as a tender shoot and it begins to grow taller and stronger. And as it grows, it will provide that shade for others. You know, Isaiah 61 continues on, and it talks about what happens from this place. It, it talks about the rebuilding of the ancient ruins and the repairings of cities. And verse six talks that we're to be priests of the Lord. What do priests do? They create a space for people to encounter God. So that others can understand that before the very creation, before they were formed in their mother's womb, God knew them. Before they were formed in their mother's womb, God has plans and purposes for them, that they're part of a body of believers and with a, a spot that's so important and it takes the wholeness of the body to be able to function. And it ushers in the favor of the Lord. Okay, ushers in the favor of the Lord. So before you were formed in your mother's womb, God put it within you to leave a mark on this world. What's your mark? What's your belief system? What are you doing? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. I've gone long. Heavenly Father, um, we come before you and God, this whole concept of you like designing us before we were even conceived. Before we were even a thought. You were designing us. We were a thought to you. So, Father, we just, we just uh, confess, we ask your forgiveness for any time when we have, um, wow, where we haven't aligned with that belief system, God. We, ju we just ask your forgiveness, God. It's, it's so amazing that you thought out all the particulars about each one of us. So, God, forgive us when we haven't loved ourselves as you've loved us. And, Lord, help us to see ourselves through your eyes, with those eyes that that see the plans and the purposes and our future and our destiny and how we fit and part of the body. Lord, help us to see and receive that into the very core of our being. Lord, because we were here to bring, we're here to bring heaven to earth. We're here to, to impact change. We're here to affect culture. We're here to be priests and introduce a world full of hurting people to the God who saves, redeems, and heals. So come, Lord Jesus, come, Holy Spirit, just come and fill us with wonder, with wonder, just as the shepherds went and gazed on Jesus and they just were filled with awe and wonder. Father, let us be filled with awe and wonder as we even think about all that you put into us. So we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, again, please feel free to share this. We want to encourage people and, you know, just think of what would change in the world if we all understood our identity, our, the plans and purposes um, our being here from this perspective. Isn't that exciting? So um, go ahead, feel free to share this. Tell others about it. If you want to learn more about the ministry, go to the website, ruthhendrickson.com. That's also where you can connect with our Masha team, our emotional healing and deliverance team. We minister around the world. 
And so especially in, um, we minister into all areas of woundedness and brokenness, but because I mentioned abortion today, really want to speak again to those of you who have aborted a baby, you're the father of an aborted baby, you're the mama of an aborted baby, and you're carrying that, we would just love to minister to you because God has healing, he has freedom. Like I said, no shame, no condemnation, just healing, just love and healing. That's what he has for you. And he's holding that precious baby. You can be assured of that safe and sound in his arms. So you can find out more about that ministry by going to ruthhendrickson.com. And again, if these have been blessing you and you want to sow into the ministry, help us continue what God's called us to do. We just invite you to do that. You can just follow the donate link on the website. All right. So there we go. Have a phenomenal day. Be so blessed. And remember, God was designing you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. How cool is that?